Hey everybody, Ryan here, and uh, just wanted to show y'all my ASK21JP. Now you might want to ask what JP stands for, and that's uh, stands for Jet Power, even though it's an EDF. Um, the real one had an MI after it, and I don't know what it stood for, couldn't find any information, so I made it my own. Um, what this is made from is, of course, the stock ASK21. I pulled out the um, ASK21 brick since it does not have a motor and ESC setup and uh, swapped it out for a V1 Beast brick. And what this has provided me with other than a um, uh, ESC to run the, the fan unit, it's also provided me with a brick that does not have AS3X. A scene on the boards where a lot of people are wanting to be able to get in thermals, but the gyro is, or the AS3X system is canceling out um, the ability to know when you're in or near a, a thermal because it uh, counteracts uh, the nature of the plane and how it acts when it gets close to that um, heat bubble. So that that will help me when hunting thermals to know and indicate where I'm at and. Uh, when to get into it. The fan unit is out of a MiG-15 uh, micro E-Flight. The pod on top and the um, little stool it sits on, I know there's a better name than that, is uh, carved from the back end of a MiG-15. So I just went in and carved it out. In fact, I'll open it up and show you. It's uh, it's pretty simple. I just sat down with the Dremel and took a little time, did some trimming, and carved it out, painted it over so it matched the plane. And it's just temporarily taped right now because the blades on the fan are chewed up, and I'm going to get a new fan, uh, new set of fan blades in there, and then I'll probably glue it down for a more per permanent situation. Uh, mounted it right where it's in the way for the servos to operate. But if you can see through here, you can see the wires run up over the canopy and they go in over the top. A little bit of masking tape holds them up out of the way. So uh, while we're up close and personal, I'll show you the modifications. What I did is I notched right here for battery placement and I added a little bit of ballast on the left and the right behind the magnet so that um, we could balance for this fan. It adds a little bit more weight than I was expecting. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the wires. The wires are thicker than the stock wires on the um, ASK21 board. And the reason why is the wires off the beast just wouldn't reach as far as I needed them to. So I had to put some bullet connectors uh, on here. And the wires are a heavier gauge, longer. Uh, it, I could save some weight if I changed the wires out for uh, a more comparable um, gauge wire. But it's, you know, it's not necessary. I come in right at 90 grams with everything. The brick is a little bit bigger. It's wider, it's longer, and the servo placement's different than on the ASK21 brick, so I had to move it forward, which meant removing foam so that it would sit down in there well. I originally hollowed out underneath the wing and opened up two holes back here to bring the wires under so that they wouldn't conflict with the servos, but I just couldn't get it to close properly and opening it up was a pain. It's so much easier just to slide it out and clamshell it over like this. I can still get in and out with my fingers. Um, they're not the biggest fingers in the world, but they still help out. Uh, this still helps out with me being able to articulate in there. Uh, in the very tip of the nose, you'll see that I've shaved all that foam down, got all that inner structure out, got the servo out, and the plastic piece where the uh, tow rig is supposed to be, I pulled that out sanded it flat and then glued it in. So that's uh, it's an open hole. It kind of introduces airflow into the ESC area so it can keep it cool. The drawback to using the brick out of the V1 Beast is I cannot hit full throttle. It shuts off. It's not meant to run an EDF. Now I could switch over to the uh, V2 Beast with the AS3X system and I'm sure I'll be able to hit full throttle with the fan unit on that but one, they're out of stock, and two, it introduces the AS3X back into the plane. 
and I really didn't want to get into all that. Uh, I wanted to be able to use this to hunt thermals. I'm able to, I went out today with a half dead battery and was able to fly around for about five minutes at half throttle. You know, and it, it cruises along just fine. At full throttle, it climbs really bad. And uh, it porpoises once you get up any speed. If you dive, it's gonna porpoise. And the reason for that is, if you look at the tail, it has um, a high angle of attack. In, in It's forcing an up elevator situation. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to remove the tape on the sides tilt it back and get it as level as I can to the angle of attack of the plane in the air and that'll relieve um, the porpoising. You can see the down trim in the elevator that I had to try and keep it level but as soon as I hit full throttle it wanted to go up and the wings were flexing and you know the motor I say full throttle 80 percent throttle I was trying to remain conservative but the plane really wants to climb it moves pretty good uh, you get it going in a dive, it'll go. You cut throttle, it does have a sink rate. It's it's almost as consistent of a sink rate as it is without all this stuff on there. But it, I'd be lying if I told if I told you it was any if it was wasn't if I didn't tell you it was uh, faster. Uh, it does have a faster sink rate, and it's just like anything else. You you shut off the throttle, and you know she's going to start coming down. And once once we get back in the summer and we have thermals to you know go after and we can get up in those, I imagine that the EDF is going to be a little more than just something to kind of get me from one thermal to the next, considering its size. Uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the performance of how it did. I've charged my battery. I'll be taking this to work with me. Got a lacrosse field across from my job, and I'll be uh, taking that on and trying, you know, seeing how it does out there. I do want to show you one thing. The Beast uh, comes with the board set up so that when I plug this in with the ailerons, only one aileron moves. And the problem with that is, is that it doesn't function the way we need to for the ASK21. So to program this function, you have to go full throttle and hold down and left once it arms and once you do that then you plug in the battery you'll probably want you know a helper or someone to hold it down while you're doing this but once you do that you plug in the battery and the battery is going to recognize or the the uh the the board's going to recognize the bat uh the transmitter it's going to bind and then it's going to go into a a um, program mode and it'll give you like i think it's two beeps and then you just release and it'll give you two more beeps for confirmation and you should be set. I'm not 100% accurate or positive about the beep count because I just, you know, I was going through it making sure everything worked, but it's it's obvious. You'll you'll know it'll it'll give you a, a beep sequence to let you know that it's changed and then when you release it'll let, give you a beep sequence letting you know you're rebound. So, uh, it's pretty simple to change it over to uh, dual ailerons. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to plug it in and show you how it's all fits together. Alright, so now that I'm plugged in, and I can actually remove some length of wire off of this battery if I wanted to, I put the, uh, I put the battery in so that the wire's down, and I just give this a twist, and I tuck it in. So if I remove some of that length of wire, I'll probably take some of that out of there. This slides in like normal. It's a little bit of a tight fit, so you kind of have to convince it. But once it's on, it holds pretty firm. I might be a little close with my battery. I might have to push that back just a touch. There we go, it's on. So, as you can see, dual ailerons, elevator works, rudder works, and of course I have full throttle on when I plugged it in, so 
I'll have to recycle that. In fact, I can go ahead and do that now. It's really not that hard. It's just a little bit more cumbersome than normal, but it's really not a big deal. Cycle the transmitter. Plugged in. It's all armed up. Alright. Try that again. Ailerons. Elevator. Rudder. Motor. See, just as I'm getting about 90% throttle, it shuts off. So I'm going to go in here and trim back my throttle. So about 47% on the dial. It shuts down, so I'm dialing it back down to 40. At 40, I'm able to hold full throttle, so I've now adjusted that for... Uh, so that if I get happy on the throttle, I don't have to worry about going full throttle and it shutting down and burning up the ESC. So everything's in working order. And like I said, it, it flew great. It's going to be perfect for hunting thermals or if you just want to, you know, tinker around in the, in the field or something. Looks pretty sporty doing it this way. So uh, anyway, I hope what I've shown you here helps. Uh, big thanks to the guy that did it before me. Uh, for the life of me, I can't remember his name. Uh, it's it's something Abby, but uh, real nice guy. He gave me some suggestions when I asked him questions on YouTube. Very quick to respond. Um, uh, again, very nice guy. Very informative. Very helpful. And uh, even though that my my idea was to get this lighter than his setup by using all E flight stuff, and I failed. <laughs> um, you know, it's still a fun project. And it's real easy to do. I did this in two nights. So um, this actually, you know, some of you might be thinking that the bulk of this is what's adding a lot of the weight. And it's not. This weighs less than a gram, you know, the, the foam housing. So don't be afraid to carve you one up and put it on there. You're really not adding anything to the plane. Uh, the majority of the excess weight has come from the thicker wires and the bullet connectors and the larger board. So anyway, uh, again, I hope these tips have helped. I hope you find this uh, interesting, educational. Uh, I'm going to go fly mine tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have fun. And I hope it inspires a lot of you guys to go out and do the same. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a wonderful day.